We are back on the Audi RS4 B8 engine rebuild project today, guys, and it should be the final video I'll be doing on this car, uh, in terms of the repair, hopefully, anyway. So in today's video, guys, I hope to do like a full cost breakdown of what it's actually cost me to fully rebuild this engine multiple times. We're gonna give it a clean. We're gonna go through any outstanding uh, external damage, anything like that. Um, there's a few bits I need to do. I've got a grill that I need to fit. Uh, there's a toggle missing in the interior. We're gonna give it a clean. I think I just said that um, We're gonna go for another road test and there's something I want to do to the exhaust which will be free for me And I think it will enhance the sound a fair bit I'm led to believe also watching YouTube videos uh, proves to me anyway So I'm hoping we can do that in today's video as well guys. If anyone's interested in my uh, 8Y S3 It'll be going back to Cambridge Audi and they will be selling it for me um, so yeah, that's it. Let's crack on with today's video and the first thing I'm going to do is give it a clean I've already got the jet wash out because I've just finished washing the S3 We're going to give this a proper clean look at the engine bay. It is absolutely minging So the engine bay is going to get a proper nice clean uh, Exterior is going to get a proper nice clean and then we're going to get it into the workshop and get it fully uh, Ready to be road legal. I think it needs an MOT So we're going to get that hopefully done in today's video as well guys I haven't actually booked it in yet but as I just mentioned, the S3 is going back, so I'll need a new daily. I've also washed the RS3, that's gonna go up for sale, so I'm not gonna be driving that anymore. And when you're buying a car like this, you need to do a check to see what its past is like. And that is where today's sponsor, Car Vertical, will help you out massively. So when you're buying a new car, you wanna do as much research as you can before you actually go to view it, to save yourself wasting a lot of time. This is where Car Vertical can help you. Car Vertical currently works in over 20 countries. And just by putting in your registration, Car Vertical can gather information from insurance companies, manufacturers, national registers, sales website, a load of information about the car that you're potentially trying to buy. Now I've given my registration to Car Vertical and they've sent me a report back and exactly all the information they can gather about that car. So this is a report for my Audi RS3 and as you can see the first thing at the top of the list is the chassis number of the car. So that is the first thing you can check if you went to view the car to make sure the chassis numbers match the logbook V5 and the registration is correct as well. And here's the car at a glance and it's showing the four basic things here. So mileage discrepancies, theft, taxi and accidents. The other three have passed and the accidents is highlighted there as a flag which is exactly what I would expect. Now let's go down. So there's no records of the car being used in handicap, driving school, police, taxi, etc. There's no records to suggest that the car has been used for any of those, which is good. Stolen vehicle check, as you can see, look, loads of different countries it's been checked in, and luckily there is no outstanding um, information on the police databases in those countries. And you've got a mileage fraud check as well, and as you can see, look, it's got a couple of mileage entries from when it was new and when it was registered at auction in 2019 and showing no discrepancies in between. So again, that is good. Now we get down to the damage. And as you can see, look, there's damage recorded in February 2019, which is when I bought the car from the salvage auction. So that is bang on from what I expect. And as you can see here, look, it's checked loads of different countries for any damage and it has flagged up in the United Kingdom. Now we get down to the juicy bit and that is the photos of the car for the accident damage that it has registered for it. Now these are the exact photos that I saw at the auction when I bought the car a two years ago. Now, so that is a really handy report to use if you are looking to buy a straight car or even a crash damaged car. So guys, if you're looking to buy a car soon, then you need to use Car Vertical. So if you click the link in my description, you go up to their website and you get an extra 10% off if you use my link. So a massive thanks to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. And I will be going into the RS4 for the foreseeable future because I need to put some miles on it basically uh, just to make sure the engine is all sweet. Um, I will be swapping between this and the Golf GTI, but hopefully mainly this. So we need to do, in fact, no, I won't bother waffling on yet. We'll get it in the workshop first. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, give it a wash, engine bay proper clean. I'll show you some pictures of how sweet it looks and then we're gonna get it in the workshop and we're gonna reel off the list of jobs we've gotta do.
So I just put the RS4 in after a nice uh, clean. We are gonna go around and do a damage check in a minute to see what else is left on it. But first of all, it's idling. It's got a sports exhaust, uh, this car. Uh, it's idling with the valves closed at the minute. I did say earlier in the video that I wanna do a bit of a tweak to exhaust to get a little bit no more noise out of it and hopefully it's gonna be free. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a rev test now. I'll turn it off, turn it back on so you can hear what it's like, standard form. And then when we do the mod, we'll see if it's enhanced it at all. So. So that is the car standard form. Uh, we'll come back a little bit later in the video once we've done the mod to see if it is improved or whether it was just a complete waste of time. So if you remember, this car wasn't actually crash damaged. Now the main, well the only problem with this car was it drove through a flood, uh, got water in the engine, engine damage. So this never was been in an accident. Or oh, sorry, so this has never actually been in an accident. So if we just go round, there isn't actually any damage really on the car at all. You've got some scratching here on the load lip which you may be able to see in the light, look, yeah. But all this, I'm hoping, I'm gonna get them up on it, and most of that will polish out nicely and disappear. There is a slight mark here, here, look, but all this will polish out. It'll just be left with that tiny little bit there, which I'm not gonna paint, I'm just gonna touch that up. You'll barely notice that. But the rest of the car is actually uh, damage free, I think. Apart from the front, actually. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does need a, a machine polish. I'm gonna machine polish the whole car. And there's a few stone chips, as to be expected, on the front. We'll touch them up as well. But other than there's a little bit of damage here, but most, again, most of that will polish out. That feels fine. So just looking around the front. Yeah, uh, there's a slight, again, might not polish out that bit, but a little bit of a touch-up is nothing major. So it is literally just this. So that will be a fairly straightforward repair, which I will do. And the car will then be absolutely spot on. So yeah, spot on down the side, look. So, um, all four tires are relatively new as well. I will just need a full four wheel refurb and the car will be immaculate. Interior wise, obviously no damage to any airbag, etc. Cause not been in the crash. The only thing that's really annoying is the button on my MMI is missing. I have ordered a kit off eBay for like six quid to replace that button. Um, other than that though, interior, again, immaculate and not damaged at all, so sweet. Oh, we do have that grill, um, which I have here today, so we will fit that and that will be that done. Now under the bonnet should be a little bit cleaner. There you go. That's looking a lot normal now, look, nice and clean. So I do have eight new spark plugs to go in as well, because believe it or not, I'm still using the eight spark plugs that were in the car when the engine was knackered, um, purely because I didn't want to waste the money if the engine was no good. So I thought I'd at least test the engine with the old spark plugs first. To be fair, they all work absolutely fine, but because they've been uh, covered in water at some point, I will replace all four, uh, sorry, all eight of them. Um, and that, yeah, just a little bit better. So let's get it on the ramp up in the air and I'll show you exactly what I'm planning to do with the exhaust. Now what I want to do, which I think will enhance the sound a fair bit actually, is remove these two um, like downpipe, decat downpipes basically. Um, I think it will enhance the sound a fair bit. Now I'm just trying to work out the best way to do this because the bolts are going to be very difficult to try and get to up there. I might try it, I might take the subframe off and give it a go to see if I can undo the bolts. I was thinking about just cutting it here and putting a sleeve on might be easier but then I've had a look at this pipe here and it's not round as you can see look it's got indents in it so that's a no-go and this area here is not quite big enough I was then thinking about just cutting it with a grinder here and then just pulling the stuff out but then it's gonna be quite hard to weld upside down um, without making a mess so I think I'm gonna give it give it a go and try and undo the bolts first just to see if they come undone easy enough but yeah the basically the aim is I'm gonna cut into this here so I'm gonna grind this section remove the um, the cap 
that's inside it and then weld it back up and hopefully it will be a free, non-cost option of making the exhaust sound that little bit better. So I managed to get this downpipe off through okay in the end, didn't damage any of the threads which is good. Took about half an hour to get off still which is a pain in the ass. The other side is going to be a lot more difficult to get to because you've got the steering arm there and it's just a bit closer to the engine. So I may, as I have an ex a spare exhaust sleeve which is an exact genuine VW exhaust sleeve, I might just cut that one and uh, sleeve it to save the ag. Um, right, so what I'm going to do now is to get rid of the inside of this I am just going to cut along here cut along here and along here and hopefully just peel it back so I don't have to cut this side as well and remove all the gubbins from inside here and then basically just weld it back up and hopefully fingers crossed that will just give it a little bit more noise that is the plan don't quote me don't know if it'll work Looks like I'm bloody taking a dog out. What died in it? There we go. I actually thought that was a secondary cap, but it's not. It's just a little silencer. So there we go. Look, all got the baffles and the horrible stuff out of there. And as you can see, look, all it is is just a straight pipe that goes through with loads of little holes in. And then obviously the noise can get deadened within the sound um, insulation and then pass along the exhaust pipe. So I've just obviously taken all that insulation out. I'm now going to fold that back down and weld it up. And will it make a bit of difference? I don't know, but we'll find out. There we go, look, all welded back up. That's gone very nicely indeed. Happy with the welding. No holes anywhere, so yeah. Now hopefully we'll generate a little bit more noise coming out of these bad boys now. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the other one off, do the other one, you don't need to see it all again, and then we'll fit them back on and we'll go for a little sound test. Right, that is now the exhaust all back in place. That went a lot easier than I thought to be fair. I thought it was gonna be quite difficult and take a while, but it probably took an hour and a half in total. Uh, including spending half an hour trying to get that first downpipe off. But no, all back on now, so let's now start her up and see if there's a difference. Well, after that disappointing exhaust mod fail, I'm now going to cheer myself up by polishing the rear tailgate because this looks crap. So hopefully I'm going to get some proper cutting compound on there and make that look perfect now. So come on, cheer me up. So I've just polished half the bumper just to give you a bit of a comparison. So you can see here, look, look at the scuffs. Paint works really murky as well. You can just see here, look, all the scuffs on the bumper. It was exactly the same the other side. And now 
The other side. And there you go, look. There we go. And that is after five minutes of polishing. Looks sweet. Do 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 do. New grill. Oh, beautiful sounds. There we go. Perfect. I think the car complete that last bit, apart from that, but I'm going to do that at a slightly later date because I don't have time to do it today. So onto the spark plug change now, and as you can see, I've already removed the air boxes. Um, that is all you need to remove on the B8 to do the spark plugs, which is a lot easier than the B7 as you have the coolant tank there. Um, I'm not going to time lapse um, me fitting the spark plugs as I've done it many times before. In fact, by the time I've even finished this sentence, you've probably seen they've done already. So spark plugs done. So these are done. Beautiful. So guys, you join me in the RS4. I've just brought it outside to do some B-roll pictures for you, which I'll show you in a minute. But I have now got the total breakdown of what this car has uh, cost me. As I said, we'll go around the outside in a moment, but this, as I'm sitting it right now, the car is 100% back together. And the only thing it needs now is that very small repair on the front, which I'll go through in a minute, and the wheels refurbing, and an MOT, which is gonna be on Monday. But other than that, guys, the car is now 100% complete and just needs miles putting on it. So with that in mind, I've got a breakdown of all the things that I've spent on the car and it's actually not as much as you may think. Um, a lot of it was labor, like 80% of it was my personal time, but the actual cost is not that much. So I'll just go through it now. So the main issue of the car was that bent conrod number one and i actually picked up a second hand piston and conrod that came out of the exact same engine rs5 i think it came out of, but it was a cfsa engine and i bought that for 35 quid believe it or not um now the first time i rebuilt the engine i had the head gasket set the head bolts um conrod bolts um big ends big end bearings and two piston ring sets I think and that came to 400 pounds now the second time after I'd cocked it up the first time um, went to the machine shop uh, I took them the complete stripped engine and the heads they fully redid the heads they skimmed them uh, tested them new stem seals completely did the heads reconditioned the heads and they also cleaned up my crank checked my crank checked all pistons and rods including the second hand one um, and they put the whole engine through a degreaser cleaner and just checked it to make sure it was all good uh, that cost 700 pounds and then obviously after stripping it again i had to replace all the um more bearings more uh gaskets and stuff and again the second lot of uh, the second bill from audi for that was 400 pounds so we're at a total of at the minute also 1100 1500 1535 pounds at the moment now they were actually the main cost that was everything to do with what was wrong with the car everything else is i suppose a result of the water so it needed an alternator at 225 pound guess because it got wet shorted uh, faulted. Oh no, the alternator was the uh, the bearing that was rough on it. Uh, starter motor that would have been a result of the water. 150 pounds for that. Um, and then if you count these, I don't know if you can count these like engine oil filter, gearbox oil and filter. I mean that's serviceable items, so I don't think I could really add that to the cost because it is just serviceable cost. But they and the spark plugs, air filters, they were all 200 pounds. Um, and then I've put stuff, a miscellaneous of £200 as well. So like when I put in the crankshaft seal wrong and I had to take it out, pop out to Audi, had to get another one, 25 quid. Uh, the black grill that I was missing at the front, 50 quid, like stuff like that. There's only a few, not too much of that to be fair, but I have put a miscellaneous of £200. So believe it or not, guys, that is all I have spent on the car. And I'm sure I've missed one thing. I usually miss one thing be it a key or something on other builds that I've done, um, but it will be a ballpark, um, give or take 100, 200 pounds. So what we've got a total here of, what did I say, 1535, 2310 pounds is the total cost to rebuild this engine uh, and the other stuff as well that needed to go with it. Now, in my opinion, 
that's a good deal. Um, I mean, if I'd have taken this to in, uh, to Audi, yeah, you'd have been looking at a. They wouldn't have done it, I don't think, in the first place. Uh, and b, you're probably looking at well, they wouldn't have replaced a second-hand piston. They wouldn't have got the stuff. They'd have put a new engine in it, being realistic. You're probably looking at about 30 to 35 grand Audi would have charged you to replace this engine. It, however, it would have been for a brand new engine. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of labor. My longest build to date. Uh, it's also my most satisfying at the moment, because nothing's gone wrong, build to date. Definitely um, the most challenging, definitely the hardest, definitely the longest, and therefore definitely the best build that I've done to date so far, guys. So. That is my B8 RS4 full engine rebuild complete, finally. So I'm now gonna get some miles on the clock and now is a good time to show you what exactly the car looks like completely built. There you go guys she looks absolutely epic and obviously the good thing about this is it was never actually crash damaged so it looks 100% because it is 100% the only thing that's changed is effectively I have a different conrod and piston in cylinder one other than that the car is absolutely as a normal uh, RS4 which is a bit sad because there are hundreds of cars out there that which would have had uh, an engine rebuild because they went through a flood and they will be HPI clear but unfortunately this one uh, has gone down as a category end but there we go so just to quickly um, as you can see I've, I've actually put two cable ties in the in the bumper here to pull it in but I went to repair this and I re uh, realized I'd run out of uh, epoxy resin to secure it before I put some body filler on it so at the minute I've just got two cable ties holding it in position uh, until I go get some um, resin so what i have also done is I've, I've put the ducts in there behind there i fitted this grill i've put the duct cooling ducts in behind there so all ducts are in um i've also put all the wheel arch liner in under tray fully on all under trays are on um yeah and i've just gone around it with a machine polish this morning so nothing major i only spent about five minutes on each panel but it had a few scratches on it and i've just gone round panther black looks epic in the sun it's like a, i don't know if you can see it it's like a purple tint uh all four tires are pretty much brand new and um, we just need a wheel refurb so yeah mot on monday should pass no reason why i shouldn't and this car is done shame about the exhaust though um i thought that actually would make a little bit of difference but i don't think it did so guys, that is it for today's video. Obviously the B8's not leaving my channel just yet. I do want to get two, three, four hundred miles um, under my belt before I end up trying to sell it to make sure everything's fine. But for now, this is the end of the Audi RS4 B8 and the end of today's video. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. And if you do enjoy videos like this and you haven't, please do subscribe. And then uh, the next video will be probably a video on the Golf and then the Porsche will be back in as well, guys. So as always, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.